It's a simple idea, but many people ignore it. I've not seen it discussed much on YouTube, but it's essential to an instrument's overall look and feel. The sides and edges of an instrument are what the musician is constantly connecting and interacting with. They may not affect tone, but they can impact how comfortable and enjoyable it is to play. If the edges and sides don't feel good to the musician, it can negatively affect their connection with the instrument. Ensuring the edges are precise and clean can also help distinguish a quality instrument from an amateur one. There are some critical concepts to remember when working on the edges to ensure they look and feel professional. I'll explain my process and some potential problems to avoid. If you want to improve your instrument building skills, keep watching and consider subscribing, liking, and sharing this information with others who may find it helpful. I refer to this work as edge work. By edges, I mean the junction where the top or back of an instrument meet its sides. Depending on the situation, we might want these edges to be sharp with only a slight break, or a more substantial round over, or even a binding channel. I've developed an order of operations to produce clean results with minimal effort, and it might differ a little bit from what you expect. A CNC machine is an excellent method to enhance your accuracy and consistency. Creating both the side and edge work, and even a binding channel in a single process on the CNC can be tempting. I frequently receive comments asking how I achieve my roundovers and binding channels on the CNC. The simple answer is, I don't. Maybe I'm considered old fashioned, but I intend to show how and why I do things a bit more traditionally, and why it carries a better result. Before there can be edge work, there must be sides. For the most part, the sides form a face 90 degrees from the top or back and follow the contour of the instrument's outline. To take full advantage of this feature, we require exact and even surfaces that meet at the edges and follow the outline contour smoothly. Most electric instruments have contoured sides created using CNC operations. It would be simple to cut the roundovers or binding channels from there. My practice is to keep the edges sharp and complete the edge work off the CNC after refining and removing tool marks from the side faces. I carefully remove any tool marks or edge inconsistencies using various tools. The belt sander with a flat platen helps refine outside curves. The spindle sander quickly works the inside bends and I manually sand anything else. A roundover bit with a following bearing, writing against smooth sides, makes a consistent and even roundover, and with less work than sanding both the sides and roundovers after CNC milling. Although the effects of doing this on the CNC may appear insignificant, for those who enjoy this combination of art and science, noticing and taking pleasure in these subtle details is what it's all about. Even though we cannot measure them without tools, our senses can instantly perceive even the slightest inconsistencies. If I use the CNC to create edge work, what will happen to the shapes as I refine and sand out tool marks? In this graphic, I have exacerbated the material removal a bit. The material removed is 35 thousandths of an inch, a bit more than you would generally remove, but not by much. In this case, we have added a point to the contour that the player quickly feels and sees. If the sides are sanded free of tool marks before the roundover is cut, this would not happen. This issue becomes even more apparent if a roundover is required on the top and back. Setting up the CNC machine for microscopic features on two-sided jobs can boost the necessary precision and time required for setup. I'm not saying it's impossible on the CNC. It just takes a lot more time, effort, planning, and precision to do the same thing you can do by hand in a fraction of the time. If you're setting up for production, 
this might pay off, but for most of us, the point of return just isn't there. This process also applies to acoustic instruments, although it may vary slightly. Instead of using the belt grinder or spindle sander, I prefer to hand sand the faces of the instrument to ensure a consistent, flat, and contoured surface, which contributes to the uniformity of the binding channel depth. Once the binding is scraped and sanded, it will be as even as possible. However, if you use the CNC method to create the binding channel, you must choose between having a uniform binding thickness and unrefined sides, or having a non-uniform binding thickness and refined sides. The binding channel process is similar to roundovers, and even minimal attention to detail can significantly enhance the quality of the final product. Perfecting the edge work can lead to consistent and even looking binding, and a professional touch to the instrument. While it may require more work, achieving the desired results is worthwhile. And if you're not planning to set up a large production run, this process might even be more efficient. It simplifies your process steps and still provides you with the desired results. So if you're not dealing with high volumes, this method should work well for you. After completing most of the work on the edges, I have one final piece of edge work to do. It involves the edges that need to remain sharp and crisp. Even these edges have a tiny edge break, and it may be tempting to knock them off. It's best to wait. It's a good idea to keep them sharp for as long as possible and only break them as a last step before finishing. This method ensures the sharp edges that define the shape of the instrument remain as clean and crisp as possible. You can achieve surprisingly different results by considering the order of operations and giving it just a little bit of thought. I enjoy this thought process and I'm always willing to share and discuss it. If you like this kind of content, consider becoming a Patreon member, liking, subscribing, or sharing this video with someone you think might also enjoy it. It makes a big difference to me. And thanks for watching.